Hello everyone, we're here today with another video. Today we're going to talk about discounted cash flow and how to calculate it for your business. Perfect. Discounted cash flow method for business valuation stems out of the fact that we are considering the company as an investment. An investment is generally just a sacrifice of money now for more money in the future. The money in the future is however uncertain, so there is a risk component that makes the money now different than the sum of the money in the future. The discounted cash flow makes use of that risk factor to calculate what's the amount of money now that corresponds to a certain amount of money in the future. But let's see how it works in practice and we're going to understand these concepts about risk and return much better. Uh, let's assume we have forecasted the future cash flow of a company for three years. The future forecasted cash flow is going to be say $1,000 for year one, $2,000 for year two and $3,000 for year three. How much would you pay today for an investment of this type? How much money would you give away today in order to receive 1,000 in a year, 2,000 in two years, and 3,000 in three years? This is what discounted cash flow help us understand. So what we're trying to find out is just the X here, the value of the company or the investment in this case. If these future cash flows were certain, then it would be simply mathematically the sum of these two. Right? especially if you would receive them tomorrow. However, they are not certain because the companies and general investments are not certain, so they contain a risk. So you are gonna pay now less than the sum of the three numbers. Uh, in mathematical terms, we express this as a risk factor and generally we call it K. This risk is already hard to calculate, so we assume it's actually constant and the only other risk is time. So we use the exponential to actually account for the fact that the first risk is on year one, the second one is on year two, and the third one is on year three. Now that we have a risk, the sum of these three quantities is actually the value of the company or the value of the investment, is actually what you should pay for this future cash flow. If this investment is in a company, then the company is not going to stop after three years or how many years of projected cash flow you forecast. We assume that it's going to go on forever. So going from this formula to the one for companies, we need to make some adaptations. The first adaptation is called the terminal value in valuation methodology, and it's just the value that the company is going to have in three years from now. It gets added at the end of the equation. Right? As a future value, it also gets discounted for the same risk. There are many ways to calculate terminal value, and we're definitely going to talk about them in future videos. Now that we're talking about a company, calculating the risk gets a little bit easier because over the past 100 years, several methods have been developed to estimate that specific risk. Uh, what we're using today is the weighted average cost of capital, which is actually the outcome of the CAPM, the capital asset. Ah, oh, yeah, the capital asset pricing model. The, the WAC just compares the risk of the company to the risk of the market, as risk should always be assessed according to other investment opportunities and other similar investment opportunities. So we have our risk coefficient K, right? The risk coefficient K, it's actually one plus a return rate or a discount rate, right? So let's express it like one plus D. The calculation for D starts with the risk-free rate. This is the rate of return that investors get for an investment that has the lowest amount of risk. Generally, we look at the US Treasury bill or the German Bund with the longest expiry date. Those are the safest investments that you can find in the market. And in finance, we call them the risk-free investments. And then adds the return of similar securities, the return on average company, which we call the market return. The market return minus the risk-free is called the market risk premium and it gets multiplied by a coefficient called beta, which represents the risk of the industry compared to the risk of the whole market. It's just a bit technical, but it's easy. If the company and the industry doesn't have any specific risk, generally beta tends to be close to one. We can, we can use one for this example. The risk-free rate, we can think now, uh, it's around 1% to 3%, but let's use 1%. And the market risk premium is generally around 5%. Uh, for, for sake of example. So then in this case, the whole uh, WAC is actually 5% right, for the calculations. Um, so once we have this coefficient, we plug it into the main formula and we actually get to the value of the company. For small companies and startups, we add generally two other risk factors compared to standard DCF methods, which is what generally practitioners use and stock market valuation uses. We add an illiquidity discount and a failure rate. The failure rate is included because private companies have a higher likelihood of failing compared to large mature companies. <laughs> you gotta be okay! And we generally add it directly in the cash flows themselves. So we know that the average small company might survive half of the times in the first year and 30% in the second and 25% in the third. So we plug in those quantities directly here. 
by accounting for, for failure rates, we basically make a weighted average of this cash flow with the probability of the company failing. Uh, if the company fails, obviously the cash flow is zero. So then we're going to basically lower the cash flows for, for this probability. On the other hand, the illiquidity discount takes into account the fact that private companies don't have a liquid market. So if an investor or a valuator or a shareholder wants to sell their shares, they're going to take a discount because the market is not liquid. He cannot sell the shares straight away. And we take this into account here in the formula. We take the full valuation and we apply the illiquidity discount. These adaptations of discounted cash flow has been developed by Professor Damodaran uh, of New York University. He also went into length in investigating the liquidity discount and it's a little bit more complicated but it generally ranges between 20 and 30 percent. If you want to read more about it, we'll link to the original paper in the description of the video. Um, and there you have it. This is the formula of the discounted cash flow. Uh, you can obviously adjust the assumptions and the coefficients for your specific company. Uh, generally, the more daring your assumptions are, the harder they're gonna be to justify if a third party reads the valuation or challenges the valuation. I think we did it. If you'd like to hear more about these topics, please let me know in the comments. If you have questions or anything, also the comments are just below. So thank you very much and look forward to the next video.